The splendor of a king clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands. And time is in his hands. The beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. The Godhead three and one. Father, Spirit, Son. The Lion and the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Welcome to New Life in Christ Christian Center broadcast. My name is Gerald Walton. I welcome you to join us today. This is a blessed day, whether it rains, sleets, storms, or any other thing that happens, because this day the Lord blessed us to see, and I'm thankful unto him and I bless his holy name. The purpose for this broadcast is to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord, Savior, and King. So today you're in for a good, great, wonderful, sobering message. And my prayer is that you receive it. And if need be, do some study for yourself. And God is going to richly bless you. I like to encourage people before I get started. And um, first of all, I want to say this. If you'd like to know more about Ridge Acres, not Ridge Acres, but New Life in Christ Christian Center, you can call us at this number, 513-257-9121. Or you can call me. Gerald Walton at 513-545-1705. New Life in Christ Christian Center is a fellowship where Christ Jesus is the center of our lives. The Bible says in him we live, move, and have our very being. So we rejoice in the Lord, and again we will rejoice in him. Amen. So today I want to encourage you with the passage of Scripture taken from Colossians 3, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And it reads as follows. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. Sing to the Lord. Amen. Sing praises to God. Amen. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, indeed, do it unto the Lord. Amen. Promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. So I pray that you receive the will of God as it pertains to letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart 
to the Lord. Amen. To the Lord. Amen. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. So today's message, I like to just uh, get right into it. It's a wonderful message. It has to do with eternity. Amen. Uh, so Jesus came that we may have life and life more abundantly. And uh, the life more abundantly is the Zoe life, the endless life. But today's message I want to share with everyone today is entitled, Repent for the Kingdom of Heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. So at hand means right now, right now. Amen. And that means God is looking to open his arms, open to you and receive you as you are. Come as you are. So God is, is open to those who believe and will receive open to receive them open to to welcome them just like the prodigal son you know a son has returned home even though he he lived a riotous life if you ever get a chance read that the prodigal son he came to himself and that part where it says he came to himself he came to repentance now let's talk about repentance because all must repent. In order to receive the kingdom of God, you must repent. John the Baptist was in the wilderness preaching the kingdom of heaven and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this message is to all generations. So we can't distance it with today's generation or the day other generations before us, or even the generations after us. Amen. So repentance meaning turn from living apart from God, the creator who loves you. I'll read it again. Repentance means turn from living apart from the creator who loves you. And how you do that is you, you distance yourself are you not turning and giving your life to, to him? He blessed you with the life. Amen. Life is a gift. But he wants you to have eternal life. And that's what this message is about. When you repent, you turn your heart toward God. You make heaven your home. You make Christ your Lord, Savior, and King. And repentance means it's a, a heart decision. It is a decision not to continue to live on your own and try to work it out by yourself, you know. But when you turn to God and your, it means your faith toward God, amen, and having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, things begin to happen. Things happen like you never experienced before. But it's a heart felt decision. Amen. There's fruits. What I mean, when you repent from your heart and make that decision, that choice, there's fruits that accompany that repentance. Repentance, after repentance comes fruits. And Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruits. Amen. The fruits of God's spirit dwelling in you and living in you. Amen. So it's not a religious experience. It's a relationship experience. It's a relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's a relationship. Amen. Just remember. So when you talk about the kingdom of God, it has to do with the relationship between God's sons and daughters and the Father. Amen. So the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, as, as it is referred in the gospel, they're pretty much interchangeable. It has to do with eternity. It has to do being forever with the Lord. When you pass away from this life, this natural life, there is a spiritual life. 
And when you preach and, and when you preach and talk about the kingdom of God, you're proclaiming that God has eternal life and his eternal life is through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So in the rim where the kingdom reigns, it, it's a spiritual rim, but it's a, a, uh, a literal rim. Amen. It's a, it's a spiritual rim for us who live in the earth, but it's a literal eternal kingdom, eternal physical kingdom that exists. But for us in the earth, it's a spiritual. Amen. And the Bible says, neither say low here or low there, for the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. It resides in you. Now, we'll talk a little bit about how that kingdom lives in you by receiving the Lord's son, Jesus Christ. And we know that John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And an everlasting life is an endless life referred to in the Greek called Zoe. And God wants you to experience endless life, spirit life, which leads to eternal life right now. So the message that Jesus talked about, let's go to Matthew 14, I mean, Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. And it says here, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I encourage you to read Matthew chapter 4 uh, for references of the kingdom of heaven. And Christ, now John the Baptist ministered that. He says, uh, he told the people, save yourselves from this wicked generation, ungodly uh, generation. And then Jesus comes and say it, amen. And what does that mean? It means good news, everybody. It means good news. When Christ came, he came to be the Savior of the world. When Christ came, he came to show us the Father. When Christ came, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. When Christ came, he came to, to preach and explain his kingdom, which is an everlasting kingdom. So he knew that kingdoms exist in this world, different kingdoms, which exist right now. But he came and demonstrated, laid his life down, and for all those that believe will receive eternal life, this eternal kingdom called the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So it is the kingdom of heaven is a realm which God reigns. The Lord reigneth, in Psalms 145. The Lord reigneth, and blessed be the rock, the rock of our salvation. And it also means where God rules. It means the government of God ruling in theocracy and, and, and also uh, the, theocracy meaning the heavens and the earth belong to the Lord. Amen. In other words, God created everything. So he rules and Jesus reigns. Amen. So the beautiful thing about that is that when Christ came to save us, he came to show us the way. You may have heard the song. He came to show us the way. Jesus came to show us the way of life and life eternal. Life, God wants you to have life. Obey the Father of spirits and live. And Christ came to show us the way. He came to show us the Father and what his Father told him to say, he did it, he did it, he obeyed. He obeyed the Father, amen. So God reigns and the rule of God governs, rules, the people of God. That's good news because you have a covering. You, you have, uh, you're under authority. 
God is authority. Amen. But we're talking about an eternal authority where the king rules and reigns. An old beautiful, wonderful king. The Bible says he came and made himself of no reputation, took the form of a servant, and was obedient to the end. He died on the cross for everyone's sins. Even those who don't believe, he still died for them. And God still loves those who are lost, those who are out there, those who went wayward. So repentance is acknowledging I need a savior and I'm going to turn to him. I'm going to turn to God. And my plea to all the viewers who haven't received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, two things, that you turn and receive the gift of God for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And number two, that the body of Christ or the church will, will grow and become sons of God by being led by the Spirit of God, then they will understand the kingdom of God. For, because we're the church, and the church is to live in, in the kingdom, a spiritual kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So Christ reigning in your heart, influencing your heart on earth as it is in heaven, coming under the authority of God, understanding his judicial authority, he rules and reigns, which we'll read a little bit in Psalms 145. And that's God's will for you. God loves you. The Father loves you. He gave his son. But the kingdom of God is at now. It's right now. It's an opportunity. It's an invitation. It's a blessing. But you must repent. You must turn. You must not continue in sin. That's what the Bible says. For those who believe Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, it tells us, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Once you understand the grace of God and how much he loves you, oh, you ain't going to want to practice sin and be a sinner. Let him who stole sin no more. So it has a lot to do with relationship and growing up in Christ. Amen. Relationship and growing up in Christ. And you'll know the truth and the truth is going to make you free. It's more than just uh, do's and don'ts. A relationship is between God the Father and his creation becoming his children, becoming his child. Amen. That's why we, it says in John chapter 3, you must be born again. Amen. I'm going to read a prayer. First, I'm going to go to Psalms 145. It's going to bless you. Psalms 145, because when you talk about the kingdom of heaven, you're talking about eternity, forever with the Lord, forever with the king, hallelujah, forever with the Father, amen. But here uh, in Psalms 145, we'll go there and read a wonderful message to those that believe. And so here it reads here, it says verses uh, one, uh, verse 114, I'm sorry. No, verse 13, uh, Psalms 145, all of it's good. I encourage you to read all of it good. For the purpose of this broadcast, I want to give you a glimpse or, uh, yes, of what the kingdom of God is about. And you know it's more than just an episode like this. So if you want to know more about it, Give me a call. I'll be happy to help you, pray with you, and encourage you to seek Christ, seek God. Amen. Because Christ came to show us the kingdom. Ways that are far above man's ways. Ways that God, who is the originator and the creator, created us to be. Amen. God created us for his pleasure, his glory, his praise. Amen. What a privilege and a blessing when you receive the gift of God, his dear son, and he becomes the king of kings and the Lord of lords of your life. So here in verse 13, thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. 
The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raises up all those that be bowed down. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And then it says here, 15, the eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest uh, thy hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. Amen. All-knowing, all-seeing. And that's his goodness. God's goodness. When you turn and repent and turn, to God, to God word or to faith toward God, you're going to know the truth of God's love and you're going to be set free. Amen. And it says here, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh to all of them that call upon him to all that call upon him in truth. So be true to God, true to yourself. When you repent, be true to yourself and true to God. And it says, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him, reverence him. He also will hear their cry, amen, and will save them, amen. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy, amen. Because the wages of sin is death. Death leads to eternal separation from God. And it has to do with wickedness and evil. Because without God, without God, the God of love, the love God, then what else is there? Man being his own God. Man resisting God. Man, uh, we'll go to John 3, 16, 17, 18. Because this is the gospel. Amen. Amen. The good news is God wants you to turn your heart toward him. He created you. He made you in his image and likeness. And he wants you to know the truth, that he loves you. And then he wants, he sent Jesus to reveal his kingdom to you. His everlasting kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, which pertains to eternity. And when Jesus came, that's what he did. He demonstrated the kingdom by casting out devils and laying hands on the sick and healing all manner of sickness and diseases, and helping people understand love is the greatest. The love of the Father is the greatest. But here, let's go there. Um, John chapter 3. And I know many may know this or not, because I'm not going to assume anything. (laughs) I'm not going to assume anything about people. (laughs) Uh, That's a good lesson for me. Uh, and you if you receive it but in John let's go to John chapter 3 so we know why uh, John the Baptist and more importantly Jesus came and said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand here it goes when Jesus was sent by God you know or you may not know but it says here For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. The world are the inhabitants of the people. But that the world through him might be saved. Saved from sin. Sin leads to death and death will lead you eternally separated from God. So receive the gift of God and sin no more, which means sin does not have dominion over you because you'll be under God's grace and truth. But it says here, verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world, God's gift to mankind, to redeem mankind, to restore mankind, to reconcile mankind back to him. He, Jesus, was the sacrifice, the living sacrifice, the Lamb of God that taketh away all sin. But it says he, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. 19 is critical. And this is condemnation. 
that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, repentance, that his deeds may be made manifest and they, they are rotten God. They are, God will correct and show you the way. You don't know the way. Man don't know the way. Man is good at managing problems, but Jesus answers problems. Hallelujah. Jesus solves problems. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus solves junk and mess, you know, and that's why Jesus said the flesh profits nothing. It is the spirit that quickeneth the man. The flesh profits nothing. And the words that Jesus speaks, he said, I speak truth and life to you. Life. Everybody needs life. The life of God. I'm talking about the life of God. Zoe. Amen. And that's why Jesus came. So men love darkness rather than light. And that's why it's a setup by the enemy, Satan, to kill, steal, and destroy you. But Christ came to show you uh, what we said, an everlasting kingdom, everlasting life, life now and life to come. Know you not it is the spirit of God that dwells in this temple? Amen. Amen. That's where God dwells in people. So you want his spirit, his, his, his spirit living on the inside of you. Amen. So I'm going to read a prayer to you uh, explaining some more about God's kingdom and his will for you. Amen. Again, the kingdom of God is the reign of God, the rule of God, the government of God. Christ Jesus is king over the kingdom. Amen. In his dominion, he, it rules forever. So the truth of the matter is God sent Jesus to save us from our sins and that we needed a savior and we need a Lord, a Lord where you submit to and Lord where you know your life is not your own anymore a Lord that knows what's best for you and that you can learn about the kingdom of his, of God and of his Christ. Amen. Well, let's go there. Colossians, beautiful prayer. Uh, it also explains the will of God. Colossians chapter one, verse 15. Let's read that. And it reads as follows. Start with verse nine through 14. And uh, this is a prayer of Paul to the Colossians, the Colossians. And it says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, who have delivered us from the power of darkness this is why Jesus came and has, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So God, through Jesus Christ, his gift to mankind, he has translated. Once you believe, once you repent and turn to God's love, which he gave us in his son, a gift, a gift of, of, of salvation, a gift to to, to show you a, a new way of life. For if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Second Corinthians five, verse 17. And so that you can learn the way. The way is through Jesus, amen. 
That's the way. The way, Jesus is the way. But, but it says here, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. That's the work of Christ. That's for those who believe and who are born again. You must believe, you must be born again, and you must live the gospel. Live, let the word be alive in you and you in the word. Amen. So this ain't no religion. This is a relationship with the Father, and that's why even the Lord's Prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That prayer is a model prayer, not to just keep saying it over and over. But you can, because faith come by hearing. But for you to understand the message in that prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So this tells us that we are so blessed. Those who receive, those who repent and turn become so blessed because they receive God's salvation, his son, Jesus Christ. And now they're going to begin to learn about Christ and Christ is going to reveal his kingdom way. His kingdom way. Which is, what is that? Eternal life. Things that pertain to eternity. That's what Jesus came to do. And save that which is lost. And destroy the works of the devil. And let him who stole from you. Joy, peace, and everything else. You know. That's why the Bible says. While we look not at the things that are seen. But the things that are unseen which is the word of God, which is eternal. For the things that, seem, that we see physically are temporary. You know, generation, you just keep on moving. You know, you're here today, you're gone tomorrow. Amen. But in Christ, you live a new life, an eternal life. So it's paramount that you receive God's love. Turn. That's why John the Baptist was, was basically pleading Turn, he's also warning them, turn and receive the kingdom of heaven. And that's what this message is today. An invitation to repent and turn for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What that means, your eternal life is at hand. Something could happen and we don't know where it would happen. And that's where you realize your life is not your own. But if you're in Christ, you're secure. Because he's in you and you're in him. You're engrafted in him. The safest place to be is in Christ. The safest place to be is living for Christ and understanding the kingdom of God. That's what the church is to be about. Learning the kingdom. We are the church. You know, we're to, we're to learn about Christ and his kingdom. God's kingdom, God's kingdom come, God's will be done. Amen. So even in prayer, if you go to Mark, here's another prayer in reference to the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. If we go to Mark, if we read Mark 115, thank you, Lord, for the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. See, the gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, the gospel is the good news that God loves you and wants you to receive his son because his son was the sacrifice of sin for all mankind so that you may have eternal life and be forever with the Lord in his kingdom. His kingdom shall not pass away. Amen. But here, let's go to Mark 1.15. I pray this is a blessing to you. Where it says here, amen. And saying, this is Jesus, is saying right now, 
the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and receive the gospel. I'll read that again. Jesus is saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. That means right now. Right now. That's right. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The good news that God loves you. The good news that God has a remnant of people who love him. They receive that love. They, be they believe in his love. They receive that love. They're walking in that love. And they're grateful unto him. And they bless his name. They have a, a relationship with God and also a, a wonderful relationship with one another. Because the Bible says, love ye one another. Amen. So you say, well, how do I receive the kingdom? Repent and receive the gospel, which Jesus said. The gospel is, is that God wants you to be saved, healed, delivered, set free. He wants to love on you. Amen. He wants to tell you you his own. He wants you to know the truth. That's the gospel. But today God is saying, like he said then, with John the Baptist and with Jesus, receive the gospel, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now I'm going to share something with you that well, I'm just going to pray, and I want you to, uh, this message reference, I'm going to reference it to Matthew 4, where you can read more about God's, the, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. But Matthew chapter 4, but I want to uh, share with you Romans chapter 10, 9, and 11. Because the Bible says you must be born again in, in John chapter 3. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So you must be born again. You must see the kingdom, and then you must enter in the kingdom. Amen? Then enter in the kingdom. And you enter in the kingdom with the Son. Because the son is going to reveal the kingdom. And it's all through relationship. Amen. But here, Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says that. Let me go to it. I like to read the word as the word is said. Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. It reads as follows. For those who are listening. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, saved from sin, saved from the bondage of sin, saved from the, uh, the judgment of sin, which means bondage, slaved, and the, uh, the consequences of it. If you continue and live in it. Amen. And then it says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. The righteousness of God is the gospel of his righteousness. That's good news. God is righteous. God is true. Amen. And it says here, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. So if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and after your repentance, after you say, I'm making a heartfelt decision. I want to turn to God. I believe at that Jesus died for my sins. Uh, and, and this right here is an affirmation. And the, the, the way that it is done, not the only way, but basically you must acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and Savior. You must receive and receive this into your heart and must confess with your mouth. Because with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. And to understand this is all God's grace, all God helping you to see the truth, helping you to know the truth, because the truth is in Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, no man comes to the Father but by him. I believe that's... Uh, in John as well, John chapter 14. But by grace, 
all this has to do with the gospel of grace, too. Though you talk about the gospel, you talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of God's grace through Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom. There is a king. He reigns. He rules. His name is King Jesus. Amen. And that's why you want to repent and turn. Because tomorrow is not promised. We wake up tomorrow, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> you know. But every day, that's why we wake up every morning and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because I'm saved every day. I've been redeemed. The Lord is my shepherd. That's why I rejoice every day, not just to see a night, another day. But another day is a gift from God. And when you become his child, then you understand his mercy, his grace, and you acknowledge that. And you humble yourself and walk in relationship and in alignment with the, his, him ordering your steps, Psalms 23. Amen. So I hope this was a blessing to you. I hope that, that who's ever listening, that you would repent if you need to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's eternal life for you is at hand through Jesus Christ and to learn of the kingdom. Some people need to repent and turn, turn to Jesus instead of religion. Some people have been reliving religious lives. You know, they've been faithful going to church, faithful in the choir, faithful paying their tithes and offerings. But the most important thing is your relationship with Christ and then your obedience, which means be followers of God as dear children and walk in love. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. So it's relational. So some people, but this message, when you repent, you're going to learn about the kingdom of heaven, which Jesus came to show us the way to heaven. He showed us how, how we're to carry, in other words, how our behavior should be. Because when you look at someone's behavior, then you look at someone's life. You look at their character. You look at how they carry themselves. And you look how they treat others and love others. Even love their enemies. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Pray for your enemies and do good to those who despitefully use you. That's the king speaking to us. And we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. He said, well, I don't know how I do it. Well, you can't do it in your own strength. But through Christ, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God that so that he can exalt you and show you the way. Walk humbly before him. Walk reverently before him each and every day. For each and every day is a new day. A day to shine. A day to be blessed and share those blessings with others. So have a blessed day. Thank you for being with us. Bless Blessed be the name of the Lord, and may the Lord bless you and, and show you his love for you so that you can understand him and have a relationship like you never have before, a continued, growing relationship. Have a blessed day.